the creative minds behind Ballad of the Seven Dice, Are We Dead Yet, Waffles Maple Syrup, Party of One Podcast, and Dungeons and Pop proudly present the TTRPG Holiday Collaboration for 2020. Sit back, grab a glass of eggnog, and enjoy a story of five slayers hunting down the Krampus. Happy Holidays. So hi, everyone, and welcome to this holiday special. Uh, I am wearing a Santa hat, so we're in a festive mood. Obviously, I am Josh Fisher. I am the GM for today. Um, I want to just start out first by thanking everybody for being here. Um, I really appreciate it. So real quick, I'm going to just do a quick flyby of the the system we're going to be playing in um, for our listeners. And... Then we will do introductions of all of you. We'll do your name, where people can find your work, social media, and the character you'll be playing tonight. And then we'll jump into the action. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Let's do to it. Groovy. So real quick, uh, Slayers is a game basically that takes place inside of a city that has been cursed to expand forever into the horizon with no end in sight. Uh, inside of this city are different districts and each of these districts has like a different feel or a different kind of environment and they all suffer from the same problem monster attacks just all the time just can't turn around without hitting a monster it seems in slayers the characters play monster hunters that are called slayers obviously and there are four types of characters in the base game the blade basically just a fighty type of character the arcanist which is the magic user the gunslinger who is a a shoot 'em up kind of person and the tactician who is more focused on granting and gaining advantage in battle uh in slayers Everything is based off of a four plus system. So if you roll a four on whatever dice you're rolling or higher, that's a hit. Anything three or lower is a miss. And um, the one thing I really like about Slayers is that it's supposed to be very uh, much more streamlined than say like a D&D style of combat that's very mechanical and all of that. Um, and also... The thing I like about Slayers is there's no perfect party balance. It's all based on asymmetry. Every single character does something a little different and plays a little bit differently. So I think it's I think it makes for a more interesting style of play. Um, so with that out of the way, let's go to introductions. Um, I'll just go straight down the list that I see here. Uh, Lucas. All right. Hi, everyone. I am Lucas, the DM producer for Ballad of the Seven Dice. Today, I am going to be playing Bertram Ironsight, the tactician. Bertram had once been a great hunter, was actually known for being able to shoot things from quite the distance, but as time wore on, unfortunately, it did a number to his body, and now he just works as a more of a supportive role for the team. Cool. And where can people find your work and uh, your social media and all that? Uh, so you can find any and all of our good episodes uh, either at Ballad of the Seven Dice.com, where we have a bunch of lore and art and all that good stuff, or any podcatcher. And we're usually pretty frequently on Twitter, and that's at Ballad, the number seven, and Dice. Excellent. Up next is Chase Dangerfield. Hi all, I'm uh, it's uh, Sean from Dungeons and Pock, also known as Rackham. I can be found at Dungeons and Pock. Uh, it's a tip-top variety show. We have a bunch of interesting 
campaigns that we rotate through. I DM for part of the Monster of the Week campaign, Fictional Heroism, which is kind of like Cool World meets Supernatural. Um, I also run a, a uh, all henshin class D&D campaign called Adventures of Attitude, where people don't know what henshin means. It's basically the same thing as Power Rangers and stuff, so it's literally a Power Rangers pot. It's literally like a Power Rangers campaign. I can be found at Twitter at Dungeons Pot is the main one for the the um, podcast as well as my personal one too. Toasted, Ooh. Um, I occasionally also post uh, homebrew stuff on the the, the podcast or for podcast Twitter. And I am playing as uh, said. I am playing Chase Dangerfield, the gunslinger. He's just, a, he's just an average cop living with his sister until some monsters stuff happened and he he's kind of swung, swung his way into it and he kind of has like a he he's kind of decided that you know what if there's monsters out there I'm just going to deal with my deal with it like my aisle and go John McClane on these jerks um he's kind of quiet outside of con, outside of fights like he kind of keeps himself but he is known to enjoy old norm uh, old nor books and Quite a jokester on the on the battle. Great, Waffles. Uh, hello, I'm Waffles. I am the GM for Waffles Maple Syrup. Uh, we run Pathfinder 2E, and we're about to switch to Starfinder. I also audio edit, and you can find us on Twitter at Waffles Maple. Uh, aside from that, tonight I'm going to be playing Jackson Wright. Uh, he is the older twin brother to Jameson Wright, grew up protecting his family, and is a pretty pretty serious monster hunter. He keeps a rather serious tone to most of himself walking around, and uh, yeah, he's out to protect any of his compatriots. Glorious. Uh, syrup. Hi, I am Syrup. I am the other half of the Waffles Maple Syrup Network. Um, like Waffles said, we are um, on Twitter and we do all sorts of TTRPG stuff. I will also add that we are in the process of officially releasing uh, the dice that we make, but we also make dice. And we, uh, you can find our podcast. You search Waffles Maple Syrup, one word, anywhere you get podcasts and you can find us there. Um, and tonight I am playing James Wright, and he is the younger twin brother to Jackson. Um, where Jackson grows serious uh, through the dangers of this city, James always, you know, he's not one to lose the jovial spirit. So he's he's the more um, face of the two of them, and he he just enjoys a good fight. He enjoys you know having his brother's back. He has it good. He enjoys it. Wonderful, uh, Jeff. Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Stormer. I am a podcaster, game designer, and the unofficial official LARP designer of the Olive Garden Restaurant. You can find the podcasts that I produce at jeffstormer.com, including Party of One, which is an actual play podcast focused on two-player role-playing experiences, All My Fantasy Children, which is a character creation, storytelling, and world-building podcast on the OneShot Network, and uh, most importantly and most appropriately, uh, I am the host of Talking Nog, which I, is the world's foremost and leading podcast exclusively about eggnog. Uh, we're recording this year's episode. We, we release one episode a year and we're recording that December 23rd at 8 p.m. at twitch.tv slash GM Jeff Stormer. Uh, you can find all that stuff at jeffstormer.com, uh, including games that I design, all kinds of other stuff. And today I am playing Old Sammy. In a lot of ways, Old Sammy is the city of Yuletide. Uh, he was struck by a monster early in his career. He was hit with a with an awful curse. His blood ran cold. His body began to fade into the wind. He is little more now than the wind and the snow and the icy cold. And so now he lives in the city of Yuletide. He, he knows this city and these streets and these people and these monsters like the back of his hand. He has settled into a comfortable life as a caretaker for other slayers, watching over them as they pass through Yuletide. But he's always in the back of his mind, wondering if he could catch the one monster that has plagued this neighborhood for generations. Old Sammy is a storyteller, a caregiver, uh, just a jolly fellow with a big smile on his face, a terrible musician, and uh, just somebody that is here to give everything that he can for this team 
and, and, and hopefully find some peace in these old bones and maybe pick up a little bit of silver and gold along the way. Wonderful. Oh, I just realized I didn't actually introduce myself. And that'll probably be important. So I am the host and GM for this evening's festivities. I am also the host of the Are We Dead Yet podcast, where we try and tell stories about almost dying, but not quite, and having fun along the way or something like that, you know? And yeah, I've been podcasting for six years and I have just a heck of a fun time doing it. Uh, My social media is at Storm Cleric Josh. And you can find all of my podcasts at oneuppodcast.com. So yeah, with that out of the way, let us begin. We start with a poem. A city expanding into forever, where the people have become increasingly clever. A new district each night appears, bringing with it new hopes and fears. So let's set the stage, all our players are here to celebrate the season of joy and cheer. The district is abuzz with laughter and joys. Packages are wrapped, stuffed with trinkets and toys. Tonight in the district of Yuletide we find a party of slayers celebrating in kind. The Sun's Day Festival is fast approaching while an evil outside is quickly encroaching. A beast that stands tall with fur like the night seeking to spread evil and fright. A conspiracy of power and corruption entraps us. Tonight our slayers will hunt down the Krampus. Snap, 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 snap. Hmm. Snap, snap. (laughs) Snap, 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 snap. Uh, So, the District of Yuletide is where we are starting tonight. It's just one of several districts that make up this ever-expanding city. And... In the district of Yuletide, there is a religious order known as the Eyes of the Saints, and they maintain two ledger books, one with all of the nice deeds performed in the district every year, and one with all of the naughty deeds performed in the district that year. And the district is shrouded in snow for 364 days out of the year. But one day a year, the clouds part, the snow stops, and the sun shines down upon this dark little district. And this day is known as Sun's Day, and it is a great festival and time of jubilee and uh, joy and friendship. There's a huge feast held in the district square where the names of the naughty and nice people are read out. The nice people get to stay for the feast. The naughty people must go home and stay and not enjoy the sun. And every year, leading up to the Sun's Day Festival, a creature stalks the streets of Yuletide. This creature is tall with dark fur and long horns, and he seeks to bring mischief and fright to the people of Yuletide. And it is known as the Krampus. And every year, the eyes of the saint, um, they hire a team of slayers to hunt down the Krampus and prevent it from ruining the Sun's Day Festival. Uh, This year, the hunt started a little late and We are on Sun's Day Eve when the hunt is actually getting started. This year, a different Slayers group was selected for the honor of hunting down the Krampus, but you have all been selected as the runners-up in case that group falls because slaying is not a safe job in the city. So you all are spending time in your uh, headquarters. You're part of a monster hunting guild called the Crimson Syndicate. And you decided that, you know, as long as you're on call for the evening, you might as well have a little Sun's Day party. Uh, So here in your little headquarters, 
you kind of have it decorated up with some lights and some streamers and cakes and pies and all kinds of goodies. And, um, you know, maybe there's like an old timey radio playing some, you know, some swinging music or something in the background. Um, you know, uh, yeah. So there's the scene. You guys are at this party. Well, I have to say, you Wright brothers can really fly off that roof on that last hunt. Wow, that was amazing. Oh, you saw that? <laughs> I really didn't think a bed sheet would take you that far. You know you'd be surprised they're quite pliable. Yeah, they can carry a lot. It's good manufacturing. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can do it without, you know, the counterbalance. Jackson always holds, he's, he's strong like that. You want to try? Well, I'm, I'm getting a little old in age, so yeah, why not? I'd do it before I can't do it anymore. I'll catch you. Yeah. yeah. Here, uh, any, anyone have a bed sheet? Is there a bed sheet around here? There's got to be one, right? I've got, I've, I, I've reached into my bag and I pull out a neatly folded bed sheet. And I'm like, you never know when you'll need a bed sheet. And it's one of the many lessons that I've learned. Let me tell you a little bit. I've, I've got, a, there's a whole story here about why it's important this time of year to carry a bed sheet. And, I'm going to tell you this story. It starts a long, long time ago in a little town. And I'm going to grab the bedsheet <laughs> and I'm just going to keep walking. <laughs> I, I, it did not phase. It does not phase Sammy, but but the, he also does not like attempt to like hold the bedsheet at all. It just I, I will say Chase does sit down to listen. Useful ta- information is useful information no matter how silly it is. There is no useful information <laughs> to be had in this story. This, oh. <laughs> there's a whole subplot to the story about like uh, uh, a little about a little train that that a little train that wanted to celebrate Sun's Day and like it go it, it really rambles. There's a there's a whole scene with a witch battle that seems really superfluous. And you get to the end and it just sort of feels sort of jammed in the, the message of like carry a bed sheet. And and to the background of this beautiful story as it is laid out, uh <laughs> I I go and I climb up uh to the second floor, if there is one, and I sure. start, you know, like I weave the bed sheet through one of the posts and I yell for Jackson to get up there and hold it. So we're just going you just jump with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, let me get down there. And I like go all the way down, and I put position myself a little, kind of where I estimate you're you're gonna go. And I'm like, all right, ready. All right, this should be good. <laughs> uh, am I gonna roll like agile for this? That's exactly <laughs> what I was gonna have you do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's four and up is a success, right? Correct. Thank God, I got a five. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, I was going to. I will. I will find a way to use my agility to help like soften the the landing wherever he goes I'm gonna try to like slow down the the landing uh sure um go ahead and roll agility also we'll see how this goes a little bit of teamwork here uh well that's exactly a four on a d10 (laughs) hey Hey. uh yeah uh Bertram you uh you gracefully glide with this bed sheet um you know you don't uh, you're not uh you know you're not you know taken to the air like some kind of graceful acrobat but uh yeah it's 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 a nice it's a nice controlled fall this is magical spread it out spread it out there you go all right (laughs) oh jackson is still standing at the top holding the bed sheet and he's like he's like looking behind him (laughs) for someone else to come but there's no one up there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> once you touch down I just raise my hands in the air go away and start clapping <laughs> oh that that was fun I'll have to remember that I have a feeling there's going to be a moment where perhaps a, a Christmas like creature is going to be chasing us and we have to jump and that's the true meaning of bed sheets <laughs> mm. so Sam was right <laughs> exactly I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
I, I, I think Chase after Sammy Fish's story would go up and in a a small moment of just um are there are there a lamp is there a lamppost near the, the top of the but near the, the window? Uh yeah. Yeah, it's like a little uh it's almost like a like a like a staircase and like a landing and then they were kind of jumping off of that, so yeah, there's definitely like some kind of post. Okay. So I think just in the uh, spirit of goofing around, Chase is going to do something John McClane esque. Oh, goodness. <laughs> going to blow up uh, the headquarters. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Have a messy divorce? <laughs> I feel like he he sees the bed, bed she being holding and he thinks that's not, that's not cocky enough. And he's going to run, jump, run for the window, um, kick up and jump and then grab on to try to grab onto the street. <laughs> Oh, oh and just kind of like spin around, like fall, you know, like catch it and just fall it down. Sure. Uh, yeah. Roll, roll some agility then. All right, that's a seven. Hey, look at that. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, um, <laughs> you show off quite well. Uh, your your agile uh, skills here and make a very graceful landing uh, next to the rest of your your team members here. Whoa, whoa, um, whoa, whoa! J- 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 you're you're lucky. Jackson didn't let go. That was, whew. Jackson, you all right up there? Yeah. Is uh, is any more coming? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll do one, and I run up the stairs. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and roll your agility. Let's see. Do better this time. <laughs> Hey, that's a seven. Oh yeah, totally. Um, there's probably some flips in there or something. Yeah, do a little flare where like you mm. spread out the bed sheet to catch some air and like slow down your fall as I like twist. Little, what's that? Isn't there that uh, that art form where you you Cirque, Cirque du Soleil? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh goodness, that's wonderful. It's good that we passed these rolls and we all didn't just yeah. die at the, the headquarters. Yeah, at the very beginning. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, look, there there could have totally been some some repercussions on the hunt if uh, <laughs> if you failed. But that's it. That's that's the peak of our rolls tonight, right here. Yeah, yeah, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> also, as part of your uh, party, you've all agreed to bring a, a gift for one of your fellow slayers that you've all uh, you all pulled names out of a hat. Uh, I took the liberty of drawing names out of the hat already. <laughs> mm. Um, just because I figured that probably wouldn't be good audio. So these gifts can literally be silly. They can be f- whatever. Feel free to make up whatever you want. I drew Sean to give a gift to Jeff. Jeff to give a gift to Waffles. Waffles to Lucas. Lucas to Syrup. And Syrup to Sean. I don't think I repeated anybody. Yeah, uh, whoever wants to start, uh, just go for it. Sure. Uh, so uh, I'll start ruffling through my bags, and I pull out this this present that's it's wrapped a, a little poorly, and you you can kind of tell what it is. And he he takes out he shakily hands it to James. James, I I was passing by a store the other day, and I I saw this, and I just said this. This is what James needs for the next few hunts we have ahead. And opening it up, it's a grappling gun. Because everyone loves grappling guns. <laughs> oh, uh, are, are you serious? Yes. This is for, oh, man. Yes, thank you so much. You can turn off the lights with it. You can uh, climb with it. You can do whatever. I like how you think. Yo, Jackson, check this out. I just run up and I start showing like, it to him. <laughs> like completely distracted from giving a different gift. Jackson looks over it for a minute and contemplates if he could ever use it and kind of like looks down at his really large body. <laughs> He's like, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's a cool gift. Yep. You're not thinking outside the box, Jack. It, it's not in a box. Yeah, I... I'll show you, okay? I'll show you how it's done. You watching? Yeah. All right. And I point at, like, one of the lanterns. 
Yeah. And like, <laughs> shoot it out. <laughs> <laughs> like one one that's not gonna like start a fire anywhere. Like I don't know if it's electric or what, but but you know. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I think I'm think I'm just gonna have you roll um an agile again, even though. Sure. That's another seven. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I, I, definitely. First time use. I kind of like go to aim across the room and then I pivot and look up right, like point it right behind Jackson and I shoot the one that's like right above, kind of like to the side of us and then look, mood lighting. I do that, uh, (laughs) that slow nod smiling gif while I'm sitting by the fire. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Excellent. Um, so we'll say mechanically, uh, that'll give you advantage on any agile rolls that you make with that uh, oh. device. Nice. You'll have Would to I justify be... using that device um, to make your agile roll, but yeah, totally. Would I be able to utilize it uh, almost within an attack? Like, shoot it at something kind of a deal? Yeah, I think we can do. Uh, yeah, I think we can make that work. Um, Depending on the shoot situation. Shoot his leg or something and try to grab it. Yeah. 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 Totally. Think of a, I spend a little bit of time fiddling with this though, and like getting to know it. Um, I will eventually remember that I still have to give a gift, but not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, during this time, Jackson first walks up to Sammy and hands him back his perfectly folded sheet. And then thank you. He gives him a little little nod, and then he's gonna seeing James get a present. He's gonna walk over to Bertram Ironsight, and you see him kind of like ruffle through a small bag on his belt loop, and he goes, "Oh, no, I didn't get you anything that small. Uh, hold on." And he kind of like you see him go like behind <laughs> the bar where it seems he's stashed something, and he comes back to you. And hands you this. It looks what looks like a cane. Oh, I mean, this will this will help quite a bit. My back's been getting a little weak on me. Yeah, no. If if anything else thinks you're a little weak, you just he like grabs the cane from you real quick and pulls it, and it's a sword like inside the cane. I always wanted one of these, even when I didn't need a cane. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jackson. You see him like beaming. He's like super happy that you like it. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be sitting by the by the fire, keeping warm, and uh, taking out the sword and giving it a once over. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, mechanically speaking, we'll just say that that is um a D eight attack for a uh, engaged enemy, and it'll deal one damage on a hit. Sweet. And if anyone needs a reminder on who their gift is, just uh, gifty is. I I think I I think I've seen this. This gift is change start. Chase walks over to by the radio, where there's this very large um, paper bag that he uh, taped over the top, and he uh, walks over and goes, "Hey Sammy, I I noticed you looking a little cold there, so I, I made you something." And he holds out the bag. Thank you. I am always cold, but let's see what you've got. And I'm going to whip it open remarkably quickly. Unwrapping gifts is something that I've, I've mastered over the years. <laughs> sort of flap it like a sheet, and it just unfolds perfectly. There, you see inside, like, this long rainbow scarf that looks like he chased guarded, and then he didn't realize how long a scarf should be. And he kept going with all these different colors. It, I, I feel like it's easily almost anywhere from five to eight feet long. I, I will treasure it. I will treasure it like it's family, my friend. I spin it around my arm and I spin it around my neck and I give it a little twirl and it, it, it perfectly falls into my bag in, in a way that feels almost rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> she smiled at that. And clap. I, was, I think he would actually clap a little bit. If you can't put on a show, what are you even doing, right? Oh yeah, there's, no, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's there's nothing good about danger if there's not a not a bit of a thrill to it. 
uh, hearing the clapping kind of uh, makes him look up, makes James look up, and he's like, oh, 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 right, yes, uh... And he just starts looking around him, and he calls down from the from the second floor, and he's like, Jackson, where did, where did I put the thing that I had before? Was it here? Yeah, and I think you put it over there, because you got a drink, like, right when we walked in the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally did. Hold on, hold on. And I, like, kind of slide down the banister <laughs> on my way down and jump over to, to where, uh, by the bar, probably, which is exactly where uh, James would totally leave it. And it's not even, like, tucked away. It's just sitting there on the counter, having just forgotten it. And he quickly grabs it and runs over to Chase, and he's just like, Hey, don't think I forgot. Here you go. Oh, hey, 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 James, thanks. And I think Chase would take it and start to unwrap. So it's good. It's like, um, it's a hat that's nice and nice and warm. But at first it just looks like a hat. But I'm like, wait, 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 wait. And like tucked in one of the, the side, I don't know how to describe it, but like kind of like the rim. He pulls out, like he reaches over to you and pulls it out. And it comes out with a little scope. Um, I know you use your gun a lot. Maybe this will help aim it. I saw it. I thought it was kind of cool. Kind of jerry-rigged it up. I don't know. Hope you like it. Oh, dang. Yeah. yeah. That, that's that's great. I, uh, all that accuracy is always good in the field. He starts messing around with it. Yeah. Here, here, here. Try this. Try this. I'm going to, like, grab two tankards. And I'm going to run back up and, like, place them on the railing and run back down. Be like, see if it helps. All right. Target practice. All right, then yeah, Chase would take take out his. I I feel like he does like the whole. Um, even though it's horribly dangerous, he does the whole gun swirl, aim, and uh, fires. Would that be an attack roll. Yeah, go ahead and roll an attack. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot two bullets. Mechanically, does it assist in any way? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm thinking up mechanically how both of these these last two gifts are gonna. Are gonna work. So Jack Jackson Stop. flinches immediately at the shot. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, one of them was a four. The other one was a one. <laughs> Ooh. Was a one. <laughs> yeah. When when you first one misses, I'm like, no, no, you gotta you gotta close the other eye, and you gotta look through the scope. Like yeah, like that, like that. I feel like with that one, he actually the, the first shot actually goes off when he's spinning, so he shoots. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> we'll just blame that on the new recruits. You're good. <laughs> yeah, this bar has seen some yeah some scuffle. If anybody asked, that that light was broken from before. Hmm. Okay. Chase looks something else. Oh, yeah, that's the one I shot last time. Yeah, there you go. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, for the scarf, uh, what I will say is um, that any uh, de- deceiving skill rolls that uh, Sammy the Snow Spirit makes that are related to like distracting or anything like that, uh, this, this scarf is just so beautifully well-crafted that... Uh, it will lower the threshold for success down to three. And for the scope hat, <laughs> we will let you increase two of your two of your bullet dice to a D8. Nice. Nice. Oh, nice. When you ask me to literally pull something out of a hat, this is what <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I, I didn't think to. I should have told you guys this sooner. I'm, I no, no. Sorry, you're totally fine. It, I was totally kidding. It's all good. I am going to make your life difficult as the GM, though, with what I'm about to unfurl. I had to wait a while because I needed to get the rhyme scheme just right. Um, Sammy is twirling the scarf and like looks over in Jackson's direction and like smiles and reaches into his bag, shuffles around a bit, flips out a little a little envelope, gives it a little kiss on the edge and like flips it over and like 
Something about that kiss, there's a little bit of a winter wind, you all feel a draft and it kind of twirls and dances, lands right in Jackson's hand and he smiles and he's like, I, I think you'll find it is, I think you'll find it is exactly uh, the right gift. Well, how about you just take, give it a read and then you'll see what I mean. And you open it up and it's actually just a blank piece of paper and on it is written uh, a small poem that says, by the set of the sun, a gift you will see, not something you'll want, but it's something you'll need. Who knows where the night and the hunt it will take you. A gesture at a moment just right will be the best I could do. His eyes twinkle in a very knowing, in a very knowing way. And behind them, there's a little bit of weight to his, uh, to his vision. Uh, it with a, a, a weight, there's a weight and a knowledge to it to, uh, behind his eyes and a, uh, and a twinkle nonetheless as Sammy is nothing if not keyed into the supernatural nature of the day and Sammy is nothing if not uh Sammy works in mysterious ways you know he is nothing if not a mysterious old magic magic slinging snow snow spirit who's gonna give you a cryptically worded cryptically worded note that just might pay off later <laughs> you watch uh Jackson kind of look at it and he looks at you for a second and you see this like flash of emotion kind of come over his face I was like oh yeah I'm supposed to be thankful and he like he begins to fold up the piece of paper and put it in his pocket he's like uh thanks for this I, I really appreciate it and I, I think it's exactly what I needed you know it's don't don't thank me yet you'll thank me later uh okay I'll wait so you're kind of giving Jackson a, almost a deus ex machina huh a little bit. Oh, I love it. I love it. I put a loaded gun on the uh, on the wall in Act 1 is what I've just done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. Uh, sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll think of where that might be handy. Sammy, you're an arcanist, right? Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Cool. That is good to know. So y'all are enjoying this party and mixing it up and having a good time. Uh, when you hear a loud buzzing coming from your uh, communications room um, inside the HQ. Oh, let's uh, start it up again. I'll get it. Chase looks, Chase looks up from the drinks he's been mixing for everyone. I'll just uh, walk on over to that room. James looks longingly at the drink that Chase is mixing up right now and uh, peels himself away from the bar and goes and follows up to the room out of curiosity. Uh, yeah, so coming into the communications room, there's a three foot tall kind of wooden automaton standing next to a radio receiver and it's got like these like crude looking like headphones on top of its little wooden stump of a head and it's 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 buzzing at you and it's typing out uh it's tapping like on the table in morse code uh, i was gonna say I'll, I'll play we probably have like a bunch of paper and stuff uh around this room so i'll just grab one and start trying to write out what he's saying yeah it, it takes a little bit because he's tapping like mid-sentence uh when he starts but the gist of the conversation that he gives out is basically team one failed all hands lost the hunt is now in your hands well, uh, team one lost their hands, but it's it's on to us now. So, uh... They lost all their hands? All of them. Uh, and the last thing it types out is, last sighting down on Mistletoe Row. I, I, I... I settle into a rocking chair for a moment, and I quietly mutter, Who knows where the night or the hunt will take us? Sammy, it's taking us to Mistletoe Road. Of course it is. It always starts on Mistletoe Road. There's probably going to be someone's significant. There's probably be some. Uh, it's probably going to be someone's girlfriend or boyfriend eating. I tell you, that place is worse. It's the worst place to go for lovers. It was a whole group of people. They lost their hands. See, that's how it starts. Uh, this damn youth with their drugs and their their hands. Yeah. Yeah, a couple is holding hands, and all of a sudden the monster pops up. That's just, that's just a bad time for everyone. Oh, that's why you don't go to Mistletoe Road. You know what happens when you're getting handsy. 
James shares an offended look at Jackson as he then goes back to staring at his hands. <laughs> well, let's take a drink for the road. Yeah, it, um, so if you would like, before you head out, is there anyone who would like to uh, roll to see any if there's any information you guys already have on the Krampus? I would love uh, to. Yeah, would that be Hunt or Study? Yeah. Or? Uh, it would probably be Hunt. Okay. I will yeah. as well. Yeah. I will too. I would so, like to roll sure. for something different once everyone has rolled Hunt. Okay. Yeah, me too. I I, I have an, I actually have an idea concerning my character just mentioned he's been there before when stuff's gone wrong. Yeah, I'll I'll pull out an old book and start paging through it and uh, of mine, and I got a seven. Jackson got an eight. Okay. James got a five. Uh, I think Chase is gonna. <laughs> Sorry, uh, he's gonna think on what he knows about that part of the city. And try to think of a tactical way to approach it. Uh, sure, I'll let you roll either streets or tactics. If you want to, uh, whichever you, is. If gonna... you want to roll tactics, I'd love to roll streets because I was going to do the same thing and think about like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Tactics is my better. better I want to see who I want to know who I know. I want to know who I know along Mistletoe Row and what the history is. The the history there. Any any history about that that neighborhood and the people there. Hey, nice. That's a five. That is also a five. Oh, goodness. Okay. So we'll start with the three successful hunt rows because, or rolls, because you all got a success. So you get all three pieces of information I had for you. Woo. Uh, so first, the Krampus is a tall creature, nearly 15 feet tall. Uh, so cornering it in a cramped area might give you some advantage in a fight. The second piece of information that's relevant is the Krampus is said to only attack those that it deems naughty though the Krampus's definition of naughty is probably open to interpretation and the third piece of info is the Krampus always comes back there have been verified killings of the Krampus people have stuffed and mounted its you know remains after hunting it and yet it always comes back every year Mm -hmm. just knowing that or you know with all of us piecing that information together whether it's tactics or or something else of your decision can i try to think like if there's been registered like verified killings can I think of like all the ways that they've killed him and can we think of a different way? So like, let's say they've killed him by slashing or blade. Like, have they tried fire? Like that type of stuff. Yeah, I uh, go, sure. yeah, make your role. I, I have a suggestion independent of a role, but go for it. So you want me to roll? Uh, yeah, go. Tactics. Tactics. Well, I dropped my dice into the dice tray accidentally, but rolled a six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll take it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so the ways that people have killed the Krampus are varied. One one thing I should mention is that uh, the Sun's Day Festival is 199 years old. This is the 200th year of the Sun's Day Festival. And the Krampus has come back 199 times. People have stabbed it, burned it, froze it, pushed it into the, you know, drowned it in the sewage all kinds of stuff and yet it still uh, comes back with a six I will say that the weird thing about it always coming back is that it's not the same creature like sometimes it'll have brown fur sometimes it'll have white fur sometimes it'll only be six feet tall sometimes it won't have horns but yeah so there's some variation in the Krampus coming back but it It does always come back. Sounds more like someone's making Krampus. The serial killer copycat. It trains a new one every year. Might be an infection. Or maybe the people who are performing the Sunday ritual. Sammy and Chase, you also made some streets and tactic rolls, correct? Correct. Okay. Remind me again, the streets roll was for... 
anybody that I might know around Mistletoe Row and then the, the history of the neighborhood itself. Anything of anything, anything interesting of note, any people that I might know, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. So um, the fact that an attack occurred on Mistletoe Row is actually really concerning because it's always kind of been a place of harmony and joy in in Yuletide. It's where, you know, new lovers get together for like their first date out on the district or old married couples will, you know, walk Mistletoe Row and reminisce about their life together, you know, amazed that they've lived as long as they have in this heckish city. And so there's no residents, but there are like this, especially around Sun's Day, this road just gets all sorts of like decked out. There's businesses that just, you know, there's lights and there's wreaths and uh, all, all kinds of like super awesome decorations. Uh, the street gets lined with nutcracker statues that, uh, you know, are all holding various implements, you know, drumsticks and swords and all kinds of fun stuff. But yeah, other, but usually at night, the businesses are closed down and there's usually not very many people walking around except for people that are on like dates and stuff like that. And then the tactics roll. Yeah, uh, Chase was trying to remember the times he's gone, gone to the uh, Mistletoe Street to see any way he can, he can figure out that they could approach it tactile, tactfully and not like get, have the drop basically the best way to enter to not to uh, not be uh, surprised or to possibly surprise sure in the in the neighborhood kind of surrounding uh, mistletoe row there is a really well-maintained uh, hedge garden that uh, is like in the southern part of this neighborhood as you're approaching mistletoe row and that offers a lot of cover for observing uh, any anyone coming or going uh, through this area of the district. There's a fountain and, uh, you know, it, it, it also gets decked out during, during the festival. So that would probably be your best approach. You do know that pretty much every other approach to get onto Mistletoe Row is pretty exposed. Okay. I think, I think Chase is going to look to the group goes, now I know in most stories, a maze is the, the best place to find a monster, but um, times I've been over at Mistletoe Road, the best way or, or best way we can uh, approach and get a get good view is going to be going through the hedge mage. Otherwise, we'd be a wide out and open coming the other way. Hmm. And the only way to attract this creature is to have somebody who's been naughty, and that would make them want to hunt them. Jackson looks at James. What? What? Seriously, dude? What did I do? <laughs> Chase also looks at James. <laughs> I mean, I, I... Sure. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. Just offer me up as bait. I got this. You you almost broke that lantern earlier. That's pretty naughty. Um... I did break it. But... There you go. Chase cover for me and said that he broke it last time. So <laughs> we don't kill it. Okay, this is gonna sound stupid, but I can't see anyone not seeing this as naughty. Um, we go over there, set up, uh, set up the watch, and I'm gonna move the first person that comes by. Hmm. Well, I mean. That would do it. That is pretty okay. naughty. But I mean, Sammy, could... were you saying you you didn't want to kill the creature? Did you want to try to? We don't kill it. Figure out the mystery behind Krampus. We don't kill it. We killed it hundred times. If once it comes back, hmm. what if it's not about killing it? I know that's back. I know that's. I know that's a little backwards, given what we do and who we are, but. If death isn't if death isn't the thing to trap this thing, if death if death cannot contain this thing, maybe we find a way that maybe we contain it alive. Mm. Either either uh. it stops it from coming back and we trap it under our own terms, or 
we identify the actual mystery behind it. Either there's something up here or there's not. Either way, I don't think if it if we kill it, it doesn't it doesn't affect it. I agree. Yeah, if we uh if we can't capture it and it tries to get away, then maybe it leads us back to like if someone is creating it, like you you people were saying. Hmm. All right, then we will aim to capture the creature. Uh, is there like we have like at our headquarters here, and we have like uh, I imagine like spending money and all that kind of stuff here. Yeah, I hadn't written up any kind of shop stuff, but yeah, you'd have some spending money, and this place would be outfitted with with a lot of different kinds of gear that you might need. So well, I was just thinking we we could just steal from our headquarters and be that would be naughty. If we just take a bunch of stuff here that doesn't belong to us and take that money and you know, we just. I feel James like that looks, might get us on Krampus's uh, list there. James looks really confused. I thought, I thought I was, I was the naughty one. I thought, it's my job. I mean, do you want me to do feel... more shit? And I point the grappling gun at like another light. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could take the money and run. Uh, I am gonna grab some rope though. If you don't want to kill it, and I like go and I grab like two good like relatively heavy coils of rope and I like just put them on Jackson to hold hmm. the radio we were listening to is it a plug in radio uh yeah I think Chase is going to pick it up and go hey James you think you could rig this thing up so it's portable I got an idea it'd be good to have some distract- distractions if we're going to try to capture it something to lead in that isn't meat as a monster would put it. You want you want me to do that as I'm like going back and grabbing more rope and like a taser. Oh well, here, I, I can give it a go if you wanna set it down in front of me. That's that's probably a better idea. All right, Chase is gonna bring it over and set it down in front of Bertram. So would that be steady or mend? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, mend is more of a healing thing, so we'll go study. Perfect. We'll see if you see if you have the smarts to uh that's my good stat. You don't want me to do that. <laughs> I got a nine. Ooh. Yeah. You've got some old, like, battery packs uh, sitting around the, the HQ here. I mean, they, these things are old. Like, mm-hmm. you, you're not sure when they were last, like, switched out for something fresher. But uh, you you pop a few of these bad boys. You attach them to the radio. You do some quick wiring around and some changing of, you know, different wires and stuff. And suddenly it hums back up. Are, were you talking about the music uh, radio or the radio that the little automaton was? The music radio. Yeah, okay. And yeah, and it starts uh, buzzing out that little uh, that little tune. Now this is quite unstable. Don't get it wet, but should do the trick. Don't get it wet. You'll get electrocuted. <laughs> I just got another crazy idea and it falls up to my RP early. Go for it. Uh, so I think Chase is looking around and he's like he uh, stops and his face he's, he's, he's looking at the bar and he's like you know that, that's another thing we could try uh, anyone got any sealable containers? Nope. I'm gonna, can I look behind the bar to see if there's any sealable containers? Yeah like bottles like there, there's a bunch of like empty bottles and stuff. Yeah. You know they've, they've got little screw top lids that you could you could pop on. Maybe you gotta make Krampus naughty themselves, and Chase is gonna start drink. He's gonna start mixing the most alcoholic drinks he can possibly make <laughs> with the with the, <laughs> and make a bunch of bottles to try to get either get to the Krampus to eat or whatever. Basically, let's get this thing. I mean, if, if Compare it by alcohol. You're going to get the Krampus sauced. Oh my gosh, this is great. <laughs> Make sure you include peppermint extract. It, it likes that. Uh, Chase nods and adds some. And if we... And if we have to be nice to him, you can just give it to him as a present. Mm. Yeah, maybe... Jackson, you're so smart. What if it just wants a present? So give it to him as a present. You're nice. And then he drinks it and he's naughty. All right. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, and he wouldn't have a taser around here. <laughs> um, hmm. Can I find one? 
We could probably like you know rig a battery pack you know, up to. I was I was gonna say I just I just invented battery packs in this in this setting, so <laughs> I'm gonna say sure. You you find a taser. It's a bit unstable. Um, Beautiful. But uh, yeah, we'll say that it is a. We'll say it's a D6, and as an action on your turn, you can attempt to stun a creature that's engaged with you. Perfect. Thank you. You want you want me to have that? You're you're kind of you're better with your blade. Uh, yeah. The, if the present doesn't work here, and I toss it to you, and then immediately regret tossing it. He uh, fumbles, but catches it. I so I, I out of out of uh, character for a moment. I thought you were going to suggest making Molotov cocktails. Same, that's what same. I thought, yeah. <laughs> well, act- actually, well, well, that's the thing. I feel like Chase would think about it, and he would include a cloth and a and a cloth with each one as an alternative. So we could either, if we can, can we sauce it? If we need a quick distraction, Molotov cocktail. Is there any other gear that anyone wants to grab? Oh, we got rope. We got tasers. We got gifts. I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. You got a radio. I'm gonna grab up after Jackson's uh, thought to gift it, it something. Uh, I'm gonna like to one of the presents that have been opened. I'm just gonna grab like some wrapping paper and like maybe one of those like stick on bows. And I'm just gonna pocket it. Sure. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll grab just a co- little container of oil, just in case. Sure. Like cooking oil, like a highly flammable. Like- Oil. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Some machine lubricant of some kind. Yeah. It could be used for multiple things, so. Okay. That, as we're walking out, you'll see uh you'll see Jackson grab like him and Jameson are blades, like they're known to be like melee fighters, but Jackson is ever since he's been in the like the the Crimson Syndicate, the with the Slayers, he has always he's never carried a blade on him he's always just carried around a very large like piece of almost sheet metal and he uses it as like a shield slash blade nice i like it uh so your your plan of approach is to go in from the south through the uh the little garden Mm -hmm. i would say one last thing chase would think to do just in case it gets close he looks around the works around the uh things in the bottom because you know like bars you have like all sometimes have olives or, you know, like, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the eggs. And he's going to grab a container of the grotiest ones he can find <laughs> and pocket it just in case he needs to distract it by shoving something absolutely horrible into its mouth. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. I think we're sure. maxed out with our gear here. <laughs> pockets full <laughs> i mean yeah y'all are y'all are ready for any eventuality you're like freaking kevin McAllister over here <laughs> sure uh so mistletoe row isn't too far on foot uh you're able to get there fairly quickly the night is ticking along and there's just a light flurry of snow so it's not the vision isn't too much a of a problem uh, at this time uh, you come creeping through the uh, hedges of this garden and you look out onto Mistletoe Row. It's actually pretty abandoned at this point. Uh, there's just the statues of the Nutcrackers in various positions of, you know, you know, articulation and lying next to an open sewer sewer cover is uh, the body of a young man uh cautiously i'll head on over to the body uh yeah sure uh so you're you come out and there's there's still no one that's taking notice of you uh or anything um does anyone else follow yeah i'll follow yeah i'll follow as well i stick close with jackson okay sure if anyone's hanging back i just want to know so that way i can uh, Chase, Chase is hanging back with his gun gun at the ready, just in case. Cool. Okay. Uh, so those of you that are investigating the body, uh, you see that this young man was probably in his mid twenties when he fell. Uh, he was very tall and broad shouldered. He wears a, a brown uh, duster, and uh, his uh, 
black Stetson hat lies a few feet away, blown off his head by the wind at some point. His blade is shattered next to him. The hilt is still clutched in his hand. Um, this body is wounded with welts and bruises and slashes. Um, he looks like he put up one hell of a fight before uh, succumbing to his injuries. Um, and there's sort of a trail of blood leading into the sewer hole. Hmm. Why would a creature that large choose the sewers? Does it look like the blood is dr- like draining into it or that it originated from? If that makes sense. Um, yeah, so it actually looks more like it's smeared away from the from the sewer. So it looks like it, it, something it, it looks like almost like maybe he crawled out of the sewer and that's where he fell. Um, finally or something. But um yeah, it, it looks like it's coming from the sewer, not going into the sewer. Is there any uh, other signs or wounds on this person? Like, looks like his skin's been frozen or anything like that. Anything, like, apart from, obviously, like, him being bludgeoned and slashed? Uh, yeah, so all of his injuries look f- uh, consistent with physical injuries. Uh, no, no magical injuries of any kind. Well, the Krampus this year seems to be sticking to the basics. Jackson wants to go look over uh, at the sword that shattered, knowing that James wields a blade as well, and he wants to see if, like, like how it shattered, if it was just a bad sword, if it's frozen, the the like. James hugs his sword a little closer to him, looking offended <laughs> at the broken sword. Sure. Could I roll streets to see if I knew this person? Or, like, at least know who they were? Uh... Yes. So Jackson, I will. Yes. So Sammy, you can roll streets. Jackson, you were going to look at the sword. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jackson, go ahead and roll a study check. And then chase. I'm also going to need a study check from you. Okay. That's a four on streets. Jackson rolled a five on study. Nope. Ooh. Ooh. It's a one. Excellent. Uh, so, Sammy, you know that this person's name was Luther. And he was actually a member of the first Slayers team that went in after the Krampus. And you knew that he uh, was one of the like toughest blades that you've ever met. Aside, of course, from, from uh, James and Jackson here. Uh, he was very talented and was almost seen as uh, as someone who could one day lead a whole syndicate of Slayer teams just based on his skill and his knowledge. Uh, Jackson, with that study check of five, you notice that the blade shattered next to him is in pieces, almost like it was... <clears throat> almost as if it was just like like squeezed into a bunch of pieces like some 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 creature must have just grabbed the blade and just put so much pressure and force on this metal that it just sharded into a bunch of shards Jackson will relay that to the party and uh specifically looking at James most of the time are there footprints on the ground? Because if the blade was shattered up here, then I imagine the creature came up to them. Yeah, there are some uh, large clawed footprints in the, in the freshly fallen snow here. Okay, so Chase, with that one study check that you failed, you do not notice the three Nutcracker statues now surrounding the rest of your friends. Thank you for checking out part one of our holiday special. Part two will release in one week. To learn more about Slayer's tabletop RPG, go to gillarpgs.itch.io. Spell Gilla, G-I-L-A. Check out our guests' content by visiting their websites or checking out their shows. Dungeons and Pop, Are We Dead Yet? Waffles Maple Syrup, Party of One, and Ballad of the Seven Dice. Intro and outro music by Luke Sokrasno of the Raven Heights podcast. Find him on Twitter at Luke Socrasno, L-U-C-S-O-E-K-R-A-S-N-O. 
This episode's background music in order of appearance was Sleigh Ride by D. Yon Ki, Dark Angel by TabletopAudio.com, Holiday by D. Yon Ki, Nordic Noir and Icebound Town by TabletopAudio.com. All music used under an attribution, non-commercial, 4.0 international license from Creative Commons. Find more music by D. Yon Ki at freemusicarchive.org slash music slash D-E-E underscore Y-A-N dash K-E-Y. Find more background music for your tabletop experiences by going to tabletopaudio.com. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.